drafting worldwide, wide, wide. So the first part that I'm going to make is the bottom. So I just went into Inventor and said new part and I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to put the bottom on this face right here or this plane right here and I'm just going to make a rectangle that is zoom out a little bit it's going to be 3.75 high or deep and it's going to be 16.75 long. And that way whenever I add the two ends it's going to be 17 and then the two sides it's going to be 4. Whenever I'm done I can, I'm, I'm going to throw some circles in here too. So instead of doing several different sketches I'm going to throw some circles in here and 0.5 0.5. I'm just going to throw a few in here just so that we have them. I'm not worried about the placement right now. And I say finish sketch. And then I come in here and I extrude it. I pick that as my profile. And I make it 0.125 the thickness of the steel. So there's my bottom. And I just, at this point, go through and I'm going to have a folder on my desktop that I'm going to throw all this in and I'm going to put Growbox and I'm going to call this part B-O-T-T-O-M and I save it and then I come up here and I do a new part so I start a new part and this one's going to be my, let's do the side. So I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to do my side in this plane right here. I'm going to do a rectangle. And I'm going to make the side. Now this time, instead of taking a quarter of an inch off or two eighths off, I'm only going to take one eighth off because I don't have a top part. So the, the top or the side is going to be, I want it to be a total of four inches high, or three inches high, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna make this 2.875 for the height. And then I tab. And again, I'm gonna make this 16.75 for my length. Throw a few circles on there just so that we can see. Maybe I try out this rectangular pattern real quick. And let's see. Select the geometry. And it will not let me do that. I'll come back to that. I'm just going to draw a few more circles in here just so that we can keep moving on. So there's my side. And I'm going to finish the sketch. And I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to make it 0.125. I'm going to save it as, file save as, and this one's going to be called side. And I save. And then real quickly, I'm going to do one more part, and I'm going to do end, my end. So I'm going to start the sketch. I did the bottom on this plane. I did the sides on that plane, so I'm going to do the ends on that plane. Do a rectangle, and I'm going to have a width 
of 3.75 tab and then a height of 2.875. And I'll just throw, we're going to just pretend like that's one big hole for the handle. The design of where the hole placements and stuff like that isn't what I'm trying to focus on. And I'll make that 0.125. I say OK. And I save as, or I save that part as and I could have did front and side as well. I save it. So I have all three parts made. Next I'm going to go into file and I'm going to do a new and this time instead of choosing a part I'm going to choose the standard IAM or I could use the weldment one. So oh, they're, they're basically the same thing. This just has some presets for weldments. So I'll say create. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to my assemble tab. And I'm going to place. And I'm going to find my parts. I'll put my bottom in. And I'm going to kick this to an isometric view so that I can see the parts better and then I'm going to place again I'm going to put an end one in here I'm going to put an end one in there and I'm going to choose place again and I'm going to do my sides I'll drop two of those so I have all the parts in here now so now I can go through and match them up or make them where they need to be made. So I'm going to start out by choosing this part as the part that does not move. So we want to have a grounded part. One, one of the parts in the assembly needs to be grounded. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose grounded. And now this part cannot move. The rest of these parts I can move in any direction. What button did you click? When you right click? So then I need to mate these other parts to it. So I'm just going to start with this one here. So I'm going to come up here under my assemble tab and I'm going to choose constrain. So I'm going to constrain this edge and it's sometimes difficult to see what I'm actually choosing but I'm picking that edge of the part and I'm going to constrain it to this edge and it gives a nice little Pop. Then, so right now if I just say OK and I walk away from it, I can do all kinds of different things with this. I can rotate this down, I can slide it, I cannot get it away from that, out of that plane or out, off that axis though. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain it again and this time I want I'm going to choose a flush solution and I'm going to choose this surface and this surface and it's going to do that. I'll say apply. The last thing that I need to do is get this in the right angle. So 
I can choose an angular constraint as well. And let's see, it's my second one in. I'm going to choose angle. I'm going to choose directed angle. Give that a shot. And I'm going to choose an angle of 90 degrees. And then I have to choose two different parts to have that 90 degree angle at. I'm going to try to zoom here so that I can see things. And I'll look at it this direction. I'm going to choose this surface and that surface. And it did a 90 degree angle, all right, but it flipped it around. Uh, let's cancel that once. So I need to have this rotated up instead of going down that way. Let's see. All right, so I think I found a solution that works. So I'm going to choose constraint. I'm going to choose an angle. I'm going to make this 90 degrees. I'm going to choose that solution option which grabs me two points. So instead of choosing the surfaces, I'm going to choose the edge and that edge and I'm going to make it 90 degrees and I'm going to say OK. And that gives me exactly what I want there. So then I would just move on to the next one. This one should be exactly the same and kind of try to move it into place there just to see it a little bit better. Zoom in and I'm going to constrain. I'm going to pick flush. I'm going to choose that and that. I'm going to choose that and choose oh I didn't apply. Let's do it one more time. Flush We'll apply that. This time I'm going to choose that one and I'm going to choose that edge with that edge like that. I'll say apply. I'm going to close it right now. I can still rotate it. So I'm just going to rotate it down so you can kind of see that. I'm going to do another constraint. I'm going to do the angle. I'm going to do 90 degrees. Choose that solution, and I'm going to pick that edge and that edge. It's going to do exactly the opposite of what I want it to do. You son of a biscuit. Let's try, instead of 90, let's try 270. See what happens. Oh, that worked nicely. Apply, and close that. So now I have two different parts constrained. I can't move those in any directions. I can't move this base one because it's grounded. Next, we work on these side parts. So I'm going to do the same thing with these. And a lot of the, the stuff with these constraints is just kind of getting used to which ones to use. And there's different combinations that you can use. And um, you can use them in a different order. So I'm going to do those ones. And this one, I'm going to try something slightly different. I'm instead of, so I'll say apply, instead of doing my flush, I'm going to choose that edge to line up with that edge. And that gives me exactly what I want. And now, whenever I close this, I cannot rotate that. So it saved me one constraint. And I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to constrain. I'm going to choose that edge and this edge. And then I'm going to choose this edge. I have to say apply first. I'm going to choose that edge with this edge apply and I'm done. So I have a fully constrained assembly right now.
So at this point I could go through and save my assembly and I'm just going to call this Grillbox and it's going to be saved as an assembly file. Same location. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come up here to file and this time I'm going to do a new and instead of doing a part or an assembly I'm going to do a presentation. So I'm going to click on this standard IPN and I say create. And the first thing it does is it asks me well, what assembly do you want to use for the presentation? I want to choose the grill box. I say open and it brings me brings this up the grill box that I just finished. Okay so I'd say the first step is to get to a view that you want to see. So I'm going to choose that one right there. I like that isometric view. And what I can do is I'll take my timeline down here and I'm just going to slide it out here two seconds. So these are in seconds here. After I have the time slide timeline slide slid out I can click on tweak components under the print presentation thing and then select different parts I'm going to choose this end and this gizmo comes up and I'm just going to slide this out to there and I'm gonna say okay and you can see that it added time to the timeline I'm going to choose this one, Tweak Components, and the reason that it added time to the timeline is because with these tweaks there is a duration, a time duration. So I could change that to 5 seconds, 4 seconds, whatever. I'm going to grab the gizmo and I'm going to push this one out this way. I say OK. I'm going to choose this one, tweak components, slide it out there, okay, grab this one, pull it out this way, and I say okay, and I have a total of about 12 seconds on the timeline. Everything's exploded now, so the next thing that I can do with this I can come up here and I can say new snapshot view. So I'm going to take a snapshot of what that looks like and I'm just going to call this exploded view. And then I can create a drawing view from that. So there's a few different things that I could do in addition to this. I could basically play this animation as well and I can do different things within the animation but basically it's just showing the parts being exploded. What I really want to do is I want to go to that exploded view so I just double click on that and why did it back there I lost my view for some reason oh it's because my slider was there alright so I have my exploded view and I'm going to create a drawing view from that and it tells me I need to save this presentation so I'm just going to leave it called Grillbox IPN I save that and I'm going to choose this standard IDW for my drawing view and then I'm going to choose my ANSI A template and I'm going to say create and it says the the BOM, which is Build of Materials View, is disabled reference assembly. We want to allow that, so I'm going to say OK. 
and basically it comes in on a title block in this exploded view. So right now, I really don't like the way that this looks. So I can double click on this view and I get this dialog box popping up. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my perspective. I don't wanna look at it from that way. I'm gonna go, uh, let's see. I'm gonna click home and then I'm gonna look at it from that direction. And then I'm gonna change my scale. I'm gonna try some different things out. So right there is a one to four scale, which fits pretty nicely. I'm gonna say okay. And then I could also change this between hidden line. So there's hidden line. We have hidden line removed and then shaded. And I can just say okay. And there it shows you your hidden lines within this. And if I wanted a, a shaded view, if I was actually making this for a manufacturer that sends this along with something that needs to be assembled, then I could make this a shaded view. And it looks like that. And I want to choose that one, which removes the hidden lines. So I'm going to leave it as that right now. And what you might have noticed is it added this parts list. So that's the bill of materials. So it, it breaks it down. These are associated with, the part numbers associated with the file name. So I have a bottom and inside. It gives me my quantity of each and it gives me an item number. So what I do with this item number then is I come up here to annotate and I have a balloon here. So I'm gonna click on the balloon I'm going to click on a part, I'm going to drag it out here, I'm going to click, then I'm going to right click and say continue. So I'm going to label all these parts. If I click, drag, click, right click, continue, and click, continue, Continue, and at that point I have everything labeled. So I can escape out of that command. The last thing that I would like to do is I'd like to give this drawing a title. Right now it has my B. Dixon name in there. I'd like to name the title or give a title here. So I'm going to come up here to File, I Properties, and I'm going to look in here. So I could change this instead of having it be Dixon, change it to Brad Dixon, apply. You can see that it updated on the title block. The project, I'll leave that as it is. Let's see, I think right here. Here I can for the part number I can change this to my assembly so this is going to be grill box assembly let's see if that populates okay so that put that in the drawing number so I don't think I'd want that there I might just call this a001 or a dash e XP-001 for like the first exploded view of maybe a hundred. So that's my drawing number. And let's see if it's under project. So I'm going to call this grill box assembly. Let's say apply, see where that shows up. Nowhere. I'm going to try that somewhere else. Maybe in the description. Apply.
title. Oh, there we go. So under the summary in title, I can change it to grill box assembly. Skip that, that one and it adds that there. So at this point, it's a completed drawing. 